Hi guys and uh, welcome to another video and uh, I would like to say thank you everybody to subscribing and watching and liking my videos. It means a lot and it means I'll just carry on doing more and more as I know you guys appreciate them. And uh, if, uh, like I said, mentioned before, if there's anything specific that you want, just uh, send me a message and uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, create a video on that particular topic. Um, going forward, where now the Home Center 3 has been out for a while. Uh, it's been a good few months and the firmware updates are coming along and fixing a few bits and pieces. It's not completely there yet, but it's enough to be going on with and getting started with. And I've already installed a few already and I thought this might be the perfect opportunity to actually show you how to do the initial setup. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the unboxing connecting of the Home Center. Three, it definitely looks a lot better and sleeker than the uh, the two, and then we're going to do the initial config. So, first things first, let's um, switch over, and uh, I'll do the unboxing for you. So, give me a second. Here we have the new Fibaro Home Center Three, brand new, and it comes all packed up like this. So, what we're going to do? We're going to be unboxing it and setting it up. So we're just going to open that there. Right, it's nicely packaged. So just open this little cover. And as you can see, look at this. Very neat, a lot sm smarter, sleeker than the old Home Center 2. And the best bit, no having to open all the screws on the side. And inside, got a little so if, um card and with a little barcode so you can actually scan for an installer inside we have a network cable so that will then enable us to connect our home center to the network a little shield sticker um, whether you want to actually put that on the window or not that's entirely up to you and a little book to help you download the apps and how to find the home center on the network in here we have the plug adapter for the mains and this particular version comes with a two pin but um, if we will just use a, a three pin adapter and plug that in for, for the mains and there we are done so all we need to do is undo these undo the network and just plug them in to the relevant slots as such and then all we do is plug it in hit the power button and then uh, we go to our PC for the next bit I'll see you soon right now that you've seen uh, the home center unbox plugged in and everything etc now what we're going to do is um, let's find it on our network and start the initial configuration so let's get the browser so open up your browser window um, unlike the HC2 which had a, a little app for finding things this one doesn't so let's go uh, we just type need to type in find.fibaro.com once we do that, what it then it does it searches your network and to look for the home center. So here's my home center here, and it tells you the serial number and the IP address is here. So all we then do is click on open. It then opens up a new window and to the home center logging in page. As before, the default details are admin and admin, and make sure you click on the accepting of terms and services. Then click on login. Let's see if we get that. Now, this one starts off with straight away with a uh, a wizard. So let's go through the wizard instead. It's actually a lot quicker and easier to do it this way. So let's click on start. So first thing it starts off with is whether you want to keep the status as DHCP or static. And as usual, I always recommend putting a static IP and then just leave all the rest of the details the same as before and hit save and then we have saved that 
Now, because we've done that, we've now lost connection again. So what we have to do is we have to go back into the address bar and type in our new home center IP that we've installed. Oh, sorry, that we've changed it to. And then again, we just log back in again. So not now. And then the carry on with the uh, carry on with the wizard Wi-Fi. It's enabled now. This is where we can actually use. We can actually set the Wi-Fi. We can actually then connect this to the Wi-Fi instead, which means that we don't really then need a hardwired connection. Or if I remember correctly, you can actually use this as a Wi-Fi extender. So we're not going to be doing it at all on this one because I'm going to keep mine hardwired. So we just click on next. Straight away, it then asks you any if there's any new firmware to download. And so what we'll do, we'll hit the download button. And this process takes a couple of minutes for us to download. Uh, in fact, what I'll do to speed the video up, I'm not going to do it. So once you do that, make sure you download it. It takes a few moments, probably about five or six minutes. And then you can uh, download the new update. And no doubt it will need an update straight away because the firmware updates are coming relatively quickly for this. I think this is the third or maybe the fourth update since, uh, since launch in April, March, April time. Now we click on next. Um, because there's no devices on here, there's nothing to update. Usually some devices do need an update, but that's only to improve functionality or to add templates, etc. Whether you do it or don't do it, it's entirely up to you. Generally, if it if it's not working properly, that's probably the only time I'll actually do an update. But more often than not, I just leave it and carry on and use the devices as they are. Next, gateways. We've only got one home center, so this is um, where you can connect so if you had more than one home center now i believe this part is not working just net and it should be available in a, a future update in here the room section this is where you then start adding all your rooms etc so for example you have managed sections so you can then create your sections for example ground floor or Okay, if I can spell, first floor, and just click, click clicking and, and just click on OK. And then your default is like the unassigned section in Home Center 2, which you can't get rid of. But then you've got your ground floor, first floor, and then after that, you can then do your add rooms. So for example, front room, you have a category this time. So it, it, it makes it easy to, you'll see this in the coming up shortly. So that's like a family room and we're going to put it in the first floor section and then you can create a little icon and um, so for example there these are all built in to make it look nice so straight away you've got that and I've put it in the wrong room haven't I so no problem rather than having to go backwards like we used to do just simple drag and drop and it's gone into the correct section again and that way you can do keep on adding rooms so we can just say my room for my bedroom or let's do it properly just to master bedroom and let's ass oops, assign it as a bedroom section first floor do it properly and put the icon for bed done there we are and then we just carry on with all the other sections and rooms etc so it's a lot quicker and easier i believe than the home center 2. then we click on next this is where we can start adding devices but we'll come to that shortly um so usually i leave this alone and do this afterwards let's click on next this is then the general so here it's Look, um, it just gives you information about the serial number, the MAC address, software versions, and things like that. So this is where the details you need to add it to your Fibaro ID account, just like I showed on a previous video. And whether you've received notifications, data exporting, and you have the facility to export energy and data to externally as well. Sensors, same as before, where all your weather sensors are, whether you use a default YR weather, 
or whether you use uh, an, a different uh, device instead. And the default rooms where all the devices can be added to default there. And then you've got your different humidity, light, temperature sensors, just like we had before. And again, potential fires and potential freezes for temperatures. So from your temperature sensors before they send out notifications. Location settings, very similar to, oh, not there. You have to click on next. Location settings, again, it uh, defaults to Poland and it's just a case of typing in your postcode and it will take you right to where you are and then you can it will do a restart by the way once you've done um, when you set the location settings in there let's click on next time so you can again sorry uh, no location doesn't but time does when you reset the time it does do a restart not on location so set your time point in and change these units to wherever you need it to be um, for your liking, whether it's miles an hour, kilometers an hour, whether it's a dot or a comma, etc. Do that to your liking and it will then reboot the system and it will come back to this screen. Click on next. This is where we create our variables. And again, we will do that when we need to create them. There's no point creating them just now. And event creations. This is something new to be used by um, scenes. Again, this will be at some future video. Next, we have access. So um, here we can connect to a Fibaro ID. So you can either do this step now or you can do this afterwards. Um, all it is is going to id.cloud.fibaro.com, logging into your Fibaro account if you haven't got one, and then uh, clicking on adding home center, and then just go back to the general tab as before, and it will then connect this home center to your account uh, for you for be able to use with your home center app. It doesn't work with the old Fibaro app, it only works with the new home center app. And next is installer access. So this is where if, if um, an installer has installed this for you, they'll be able to put their details in. So I can put that in now, but it won't let me do it just yet because we've not added this to the home uh, Fibaro ID yet. So this is then where um, the installer would put in their details as such. So info at yorkshireautomation.co.uk for me. And remote access, so it's be remote access and support. Support is Fibaro support. Um, and remote access is for you to be able to access your home center anywhere. If you disable this, then you will be able to access your own home center. So you just keep that enabled. But keep support disabled unless Fibaro um, ask you to enable it for um, so they when you need support by them right next this has got an alarm panel just like the old version so you've got this is where you can define your alarm zones again we do this after we've created our sensors or you create your own scenes just like before and alarm specific scenes are all in here so they so you're easy to ID rather than having to scroll through a bunch of scenes same with the climate. So if you have a heating system using the, it's the equivalent to the heating panel. A garden is the equivalent to the sprinkler panel. And then this is where all your scenes are, whether they're block scenes or lower scenes. So they're all in here. And some, and what you can do is you can categorize all your scenes. So you can just actually hit one of these buttons here and your, scenes that you've allocated as lights will just be displayed so it makes it easy to find scenes that you're looking for rather than having to scroll through a whole bunch of them profiles is a new one that they've created it's very similar to if you if you've used other controllers such as vera or smart things where you can actually add scenes to the different areas where the the whether you put the status of the home center in home mode then these certain scenes will be active whether it's in a bay mode those will be active vacation mode night mode so in a way it actually creates the timers for you but um if you're like me you you create all your timers and with variables and etc then you it's something that you don't really going to be using because um, you've created them all yourself with the variables and everything so this is for those who create like block scenes and things like that and who just want to have quick access to different scenes and that's how you would create it 
it would mean that you would have to put these um, profiles in yourself so you tell the system it's night mode and then that scene will start working or vacation mode or away mode or home mode so depending on how you set your system up will depend on whether you use this or not VoIP it can be used as a VoIP server which is voice over IP um, but it's something that I've not played with just yet so we might have to come to that later on when I've had more chance of looking at it here's your black up sections so cloud backup local backup just like before but you do need a Fibaro ID account to start creating a backups and creating a backup and uh, local backup as it says you do your local backup press the and then download the file and simple as that so it's stored on your own uh, machine your computer laptop etc this is the same as the other one because it's got four cores and more memory so this tells you what the uh, usage is on the all four cores of your system again ram usage how much ram is being used and what's the capacity of the ram again storage space tells you how much storage space is being used and the Z wave, uh, whether it's configured and if they've got any templates or devices without templates. And the final one is the Z wave network configuration, which is uh, the same as the other one, where it shows all your, um, just like the other one. In the previous one, um, it showed you where you can reconfigure all devices and secondary controls, etc and of course the remeshing of the network etc so that's all on here and the polling time as well so we'll click on next and then that finishes the initial um, that finishes the initial setup and then it brings you back to the main page okay now so on the left side you'll see the whole house just the default room just the ground floor room just the first floor room so that makes it very quick and easy to go through the different floors and then if you click on that you can actually then sub room and just show you the sub rooms as well that's all types of devices when you click on others it goes for the other type of device so these are mostly if you click on all it's all your z-wave devices on here you've got the little icons at the top here is the alarm zones so it's like a quick shortcut for all the alarm and alarm scenes this will show you who's logged in currently admin this will then show you a quick one to the update whether there's a home center to download or devices or firmware updates to download this one shows you messages any messages so here email addresses empty notification titles are all empty so we then have to fill out the information and if you want to see the critical messages warning messages or informational messages it tells you also on here what type of message it is as well this one is the weather it tells you what the current weather is here which isn't too bad and next one is the current time date and time so i haven't set my time up yet so it's still showing as european and then the, this is the part when I was telling you about what status we're in home, away, vacation or night mode. So you'd actually change that all from here. And the final one is, um, ad, this is me logged in as admin, but then we can go straight to account settings. Dark theme is something new. So when you click on that, it changes um, to the dark theme. So depending on which way you like it, uh, white on black or black on white, it will then be able to, depending on how well you you prefer it next is if you want to go into recovery mode to recover the system that's where you would go reboot home center straightforward and then of course log out when you want to log out okay so that's all there next thing we're going to do now on the left side if you click on home that takes you back to the main dashboard to see everything the middle one is the events log or the history and then it can show you all the different type of events that have been occurring um, so if you've got say blog to events panel 
this is where you will actually see everything that's been going on, whether the switch is turned on to off, uh, sensors being breached or become safe, etc. This is all there, providing you've left the checkbox checked. This one is the settings, so this goes back into the same settings box that we did last time. So um, normally, because I don't use a Wi-Fi element, I normally switch it off myself personally. So it's entirely up to you whether you want to. And then you've got access to all the different sections quickly. So whatever you want to do. So for me. Once I finish this video, I'm going to go on to location and time, etc. And I'm going to update it all. Okay, let's go further down. And now this one is your debug window. It's now here at the bottom and it's uh, only visible when you want to make it, make it visible rather than being at the top like it used to. And then, of course, they've, got, they've changed the system on the Lua. So once you start working on that, we'll, we'll come to that. The middle one is the uh, no we'll come to that last this box here is the support page it then takes you on to Fibaro support so you can do it's like a quick link straight away where you can go into Fibaro support let's close that for now and then the middle one is called swagger once you click on it it opens up a new page whoops it's opened it over there so it opens up a new page and it actually goes into the API and then from here you can get all the different data so it's more for programmers and um, things like that rather than uh, the everyday usage so that's what that one does um, final thing before I go access do you want to add new users this is where you can create new users now it's slightly different so maybe Actually, I will connect to my Fibaro ID. So let's connect to Fibaro ID. So first thing I need to do is I need to log in. So let me log in. Click on next, continue. And log in. Not now. Oh. I forgot my password. I think that's it now. Yeah. So that's my account. So what I want to do is I want to add a home center. Now I need to add the serial number. So I'll go back to my original home center, click on the general tab, and I can then copy and paste my um, serial number and my MAC address. So let's go to this one and paste it in and then add home center. It's now added. So that's my home center added. Now it says here, so that's my home center two, this is my home center three. So sharing and no shares, no access. So what I'll do is I'll click on this arrow here because the way to um, add additional users is different. So we'll click on this arrow here and then that opens up this information page here and what we then do is we click on add user and then we then add in the your second person so what I'm doing is I'm adding my wife's account in so she's got access and what that does is it's actually sent a notification to her email for her to then log in with her Fibaro ID and therefore um, instead of this being waiting it'll be connected so once she clicks on the link puts her IDs in that's it it's done and I can do that again and again from for other users on the account so I'll be doing that for the kids as well so they they'll have access so this is the only way to do it now not like with home center 2 where you can actually do it from within the home center and then you had to use your Fibaro ID and then their local IDs to log in. This one's different. This one just uses all the bar IDs to log in to the system. So that's a change. So um, let me exit that. So now that has been done, if I then click on uh, access again, 
you can see that now that Fibaro ID is now checked because I've connected to it. Installer access. So let's tick that box there and then we can add in my uh, automation. That this is if I check this box, it means that I can have access to for 24 hours to perform actions. This is my own home center, so it doesn't really make a difference. Um, if I leave it unchecked, it doesn't matter because it will still add this to my installer app and therefore I can still monitor it. And if I click on add, and that's it, request in progress, and it's done. And I've had a notification on my phone to say it's been done. And of course, you've got this one here, installer access configured. Right. Um, one more thing before I go, the addition of devices. On this one, you've got to go make sure you're on settings, devices. Once you're here, these are the two buttons to add and remove a device. So click on add. We're adding a Z-Wave device. And again, usually NWI, if it's far away from your home center, and if it's a security-based device, that's where you would set it. And this is a learning mode duration. So very, very similar to before. Start clicking on add, and then it goes into inclusion mode. Click the B button just like you would normally do on other devices. And then the whole, all of it then gets added to your home center as before. Let's click on cancel. If you wanted to create, so, right, because I was on the Z-Wave menu, it automatically added it as a Z-Wave device. Now if I click on all, click on add, then it gives me the option of nice devices or other devices. And here you've got the shortcuts, Z-Wave devices, nice devices, and other. So I want to add in a camera, say for example, I leave that on other, click on add. It gives me this menu. If I'm on all, I click on add, then I get the menu again. So let's do other, and we can still come back to the same. So this is where we can shortcut to different things blinds, ambience, climate. These are for other devices that you get. Uh, we're talking about um, the equivalent of plugins. So security, so we've got IP cameras, video gates, DSC, saddle box. This is exactly what um, we had in the others. So Philips, Nuvo, Logitech, Sonos. Um, so everything that we had with the other devices, you know, with the on, on the plugins menu, this is where you would do it all from. Philips Hue is in here as well. There, uh, there, Philips Hue. So that's how you would add those types of devices in from here. So even XPMC, just like um, just like in the previous version. Um, Quick App is the equivalent to virtual devices in Home Center 2, and they are a little bit harder to do, but they are a lot more powerful. So again, we'll come to that in a future video. And upload file is if you have a quick app that's been made by somebody else, just like virtual devices, you can actually import them into here and you'll be able to um, install what other people have written. So there you have it. Um, that's the Home Center 3 intro. Hope you find that it's useful. Um, any questions as usual, give me a shout and um, I'll leave you guys to play with uh, your Home Centers yourself. So to finish with, thank you for watching and uh, bye for now.